Welcome back to another special edition of the Weekly Whippy Wrap-Up. Why is it special this week? It's because it is a construction week at my place. So you're going to hear some banging going on in the background. All good news for you, though. It's a new office space in the basement. It's going to be a nice new backdrop instead of this boring situation you got going on with the sign over here. So stick with me, though. We're going to hop into what's happening with mortgage rates and big announcements coming up this week. Everything that's happening in Whippy Housing. And let's get right into it. As promised, no wasting time today. Let's get right into what is happening in the bond market. Again, this is going to determine the price of our five-year fixed rate mortgages going forward, as you know from this channel. So we can see again, it's still that same peak. We dropped below three as we kind of covered last time on the channel. A bit of a bump, and now we're seeing a bit of a tail off as well. So really what the bond market's going to look at is how well is the Bank of Canada approaching inflation? How well are they trying to deal with it? If they feel like they're being a little too aggressive with their rate hikes, you'll see these bond yields start to dip. If they feel like they're not doing enough, you'll see bond yields start to take off again. So what we're seeing right now, I wouldn't expect too much movement in the five-year fixed rate mortgage products, but let's see what the experts are saying as well. So this is Ron Butler, a great follow on Twitter. And you can see here, this is last week, last uh, July 6th, but he saw some non-bank lenders making strong moves on the five-year fixed rates, dropping it from 40 basis points, maybe even 50 basis points in some instances. He was waiting on a big bank reaction. So let's check out, according to Rate Hub, what the big banks have been doing as well. Did they react? Did they move the rates at all? Shorter answer at this point is not much movement. We've actually seen CIBC increase their five-year fixed rate product. Everybody else has stayed, stayed steady from where we were last week. In terms of your variable rate mortgages, which is right here, your five-year variables, you're going to see these go up and may already be up depending on when you're watching this video. I'm recording on July 12th, but July 13th, we have a big announcement from the Bank of Canada. Both the overnight lending rate will be changed as well as their monetary policy report. So we'll get a good idea as to how the economy is doing based on this meeting on July 13th. But like I said, all these rates will be increased. Right into our housing data next. So we're gonna take a look as we always do at our new listings. Uh, we saw the bit of a slowdown last week. And again, last week was my monthly update. So we didn't look at the numbers on the weekly basis, but this is kind of the uh, Canada day long weekend effect, a big drop off in activity in that week leading up and then a bit of a bounce back now. So you can see that our uh, five year or five week rolling averages, my apologies, are still trending downwards. Uh, 54.6 listings per week on the detached side and 8.8 .8 listings per week on the townhome side. Sales activity, we saw the same thing, especially on the detached side, a big dip, uh, kind of going into the long weekend, a bit of a bounce back. Let's remember that at the time of recording these videos, not every single sale has been reported. There is a kind of delay in what you're allowed to report a sale on the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board. So this 17 number may be a little low, but if this is close to accurate though, you're setting a kind of, I call it a yearly low. These first few weeks of January, Everybody's still asleep, waking up from their long winter's naps, their long holidays. So this is a very low sales number that we are seeing. And again, extremely low on the townhome side. We only had one sale last week in Whippy townhomes. And these five-week rolling averages are trending downwards still. 5.2 sales per week on the townhome side and 24.2 sales per week on the detached side. How does that all shake down in the median price point? So for the week itself... 1.1 million ish for a detached home was the median price point and 842,000 for a townhome. You can see how those relate to our kind of rolling averages that we are keeping track of here. Just under 1.1 on the detached side. So virtually the same as it was this, this past week. And our five week rolling average, it's a little higher on the townhome side than what we saw in this past week. But again, that was only one sale. It's not really affecting that five week rolling average too, too much. The reason I say that it's not affecting it too much is because these are weighted averages that I'm using. So if a week has more sales, that week will be weighted heavier when we look at the five-year rolling average. And I do this the same thing for the days on market too. Speaking of which, here we are, days on market. So you can see here, big jump in days on market on the detached side. We're up to 18 for the average days on market for property. That's listing days on market. I say listing days on market because the next slide is gonna be a little explanation for you all between listing and property days on market and townhomes are trending downwards. Again, let's not put too much emphasis on the six number though, it was only based on one sale. Our five week rolling averages on the detached side, we're at 11. On the townhome side, we're at 10.3. So here's the slide I promised, and this is the days on market comparison. And what they'll do is compare the listing days on market with the property days on market. So I'm going to link a video in the top corner here. It was a short that I did on YouTube that just explains the difference between the two. But pretty much with this property days on market, 
is it captures every single time that a single property was listed. So let's say 123 Main Street was listed on June 1st. A week later, they terminated the listing and relisted it. That's listing number two for the same property. And let's say they did the same thing a couple more times and it finally sold on June 26th. If they had have relisted it on June 23rd, it would have only shown as three days on market for that listing, whereas the property was truly listed for 26 days. So I highlighted at the bottom here what's going on in Whitby. When you compare it to the rest of the GTA, the market is still moving quicker in Whitby from a property perspective than everywhere else. You know, Scugog, same thing, Clarington a little bit quicker. But you, you look anywhere else at any of these other regions from Halton, Peel, Toronto, York, Whitby is still moving quicker. But what I would say is when you're looking at that listing days on market, inflate that number by about 50% to get the true representation of how long a property is actually staying on the market for. And this is going to help you as a seller with your expectations, how long it's going to take me to sell. And it'll help you as a buyer in terms of do I have a bit of time to make a decision on this specific property we're looking at. Make sure you're asking your realtor for the property days on market, not just the listing days on market. Checking in on the suspendeds and detached, uh, it's stayed pretty steady. It's been four for the last three weeks, four every single week, uh, terminations and suspensions on the townhome side. For a five week rolling average of 4.8, did see a big spike in suspensions and terminations on the detached side, although this five week rolling average is still trending down. But again, we kind of expect that to pick back up based on we are seeing, especially if this this dark red line stays above the five week trend line, we'll see that pick back up. But right now it's at 26.8 terminations and suspensions per week. The quick recap of these smaller market segments and not too, too much activity going on. Actually only two sales this week between all the condos and semis and you know only 14 listings, quick math there. On the semis, we had four listings this week versus three last week. We've had zero sales going back for two weeks now and that five week rolling average is dipping now down to 822,000 ish. We do have 12 active listings up to from last week. Condo apartments, again, six new listings versus five last week. We had no sales versus two the week before. Our five week rolling average for price is down to just over $650,000. And we have one more active listing on the market than last week. In our condo townhomes, the only segment of the smaller segments where we actually did have a sale, uh, we had two sales, four listings versus six the week before. We stayed steady at the two sales and our five week rolling average for price bumped up to just shy of a $735,000 with 15 active listings on the market. I was realizing as I was putting this chart together that I'm gonna have to maybe switch my margins around and uh, put the months across the top because we were quickly running out of space here as we get into July. Uh, but you can see here, showings per new listing. Slight uptick in showings in early July, 15.3 per new listing. So you're up just shy of a 3%, 2.7%. But our offers are way down. And again, I wouldn't read too, too much into this yet. It's only, you know, 10-ish days worth of data that we are looking at, and that's including a holiday in there, a long weekend where a lot of people weren't doing anything. So let's see what happens as the month goes on. But we are down 40% in the early days of offers per new listing uh, compared to June 2022. And I want to show you kind of graphically on a chart what this activity has looked like throughout the year. Okay, I've jumped to the top of the screen to show you this one. You can see our offer volume hit its peak back in January. And it's kind of been downhill with some up and downs ever since, you know, a bit of a lull with a pick back up. Maybe these were the expiring kind of rate holds from earlier in the year where people were putting offers in to try and grab something. But since the end of May, it's been trending slowly downwards. Don't focus too, too much over here. This is extremely incomplete data, but um, this point here for June 3rd, that is the lowest number of offers we've had in any given week going back to January. See if this trend continues. I'm expecting it to continue through the summer, especially as people wait to see what the Bank of Canada decides to do with some of these rate announcements that we have coming up. And our last slide of the day is our showings per offer. How many showings does it take you to get an offer on your property? And again, you can see that we had a big, big uptick in July so far. It's taking you 25 showings roughly to get one offer on the property. So that's up 70% from last month. We'd seen it kind of level out through April, May, and June. Let's wait again until maybe next week's video, the week after to see if this number levels out um, early days with the holiday in there. All those things considered, it's, it's the same thing with the offers per new listing number that we're looking at. I'm expecting to see this number higher than maybe 14.9 through the summer, but I wasn't expecting 25.4 right out of the gate 
in July. So that's the wrap for this week with all things Whitby Real Estate. Uh, if you've stuck with me through this much of the video, I hope that you're actually getting some good value out of it. Love if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications so I can send it out to more people just like you who are getting value out of these videos that I do. I'm not trying to be the salesy approach guy, I just wanna bring you all the data every single week. So if you enjoy that style, please do share this with a friend. And also let me know, are there other markets you want to see this data for? I'm focusing in Durham region, so I was thinking about lumping in maybe Oshawa with my Whitby updates and then doing an Ajax Pickering video as well each week. So let me know in the comments below if this is something you'd be interested in seeing. Keep your eyes out for the rate announcement on July 13th if it hasn't happened already. Again, we will have big effects on the real estate market. Aside from that, enjoy the rest of this week. Until we speak again next time, stay safe and cheers.